right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link with whatever social media network you have. Uh, before I start today, I uh, in the morning I found a surprise in my uh, donation box. Uh, I found a donation from Brother David Wood, and uh, that's very kind of him. And I really, uh, uh, I mean, it was a nice uh, good morning from him. So, my greeting for everybody who support us and help us in donation. And thank you for all of you. And thanks to uh, David for his nice surprise. Uh, yeah, I heard that he's trying to contact me and uh, I told him to give me his ID so I can contact him myself. Uh, today our topic is about the prophecies of Muhammad. Muslims, they claim that Muhammad, he have a lot of prophecies. If you go and search in the net, you will find endless articles speaking about Muhammad prophecies. And I find those prophecies are hilarious, crazy, and even some of them, they are, or most of them, they are really foolish. I understand that a person, he tried to uh, promote his belief. But what I don't understand, how Muslims even, they can accept those prophecies to be considered as a prophecy. As an example, Muhammad in the Bible. I mean, that would be funny, because even the Quran says, you will never find Muhammad in the Bible. You will find a guy, his name is Ahmad. And the Quran says that you will find his name, Ahmad, not Muhammad, and not a prophecy, do not tell who is this person. If we go in the Quran, please invite your friends. And as you know, you know, we are not kind of people who make statement without proofs and reference. Muhammad, he made it clear. <coughs> that it's already prophesied about him. But as a person who his name is Ahmed. This is a chapter 61, verse number 6. Um, hold on, let me turn the heater on. You believe it, we have a snowstorm? I mean, unbelievable, isn't it? Snowstorm? It is, it's April 28th. I mean, come on. <laughs> snowstorm. Anyway. Um, give me a second. <laughs> it's getting colder and colder you should read with me this uh, verse here chapter 61 verse number 6 it says and remember Jesus the son of Mary said O children of Israel I am a messenger of Allah sent to you confirming the law which come before me and giving a glad tiding of a messenger will to come after me which shall be his name Ahmed so when the Muslim they try to find their prophet uh, like we heard the that he said in the song of songs there's Muhammadim Muhammadim what this is not even Muhammad and uh, that's against even what Muhammad said. You have to find it in the New Testament because the one who's speaking here supposedly is Isa. Um, just to give you a note, by the way, here, uh, when the Muslim, they put in the Quran, Jesus, Jesus never mentioned, not even once in the Quran. Not even once. The name is in the Quran, is a person, his name is Isa, and we do not know who is Isa. Isa, which is the nephew of Moses, and his uncle is Moses and Aaron. So we do not know who is this Isa, we never heard of him. So in Muhammad, he cannot even quote the name correctly. So here you notice that Muhammad is claiming that Isa, 
he prophesy about him as Ahmed, not as Muhammad, not as the comforter, as the Muslims, uh, you know, they come and say, the comforter says their spirit. I mean, is your prophet a spirit? Is your prophet living forever? I mean, Muslims are very funny when they try to prove desperately their prophet to be a prophet. And the funny, they say to you, your Bible is corrupt. Okay, what? so you accept a verse in the Bible, but you don't accept the chapter? <laughs> the same chapter, they don't accept it. They accept that verse. That verse only speak about the prophet, but that verse proving to them that they are lying. Or what about the verse which in the Old Testament speaking about the hypocrite who they say the book is sealed? We are unlearned. They say, here we go, the prophet is unlearned. But the verse they are speaking about hypocrites, liars. How you even accept that this is about your prophet? So, desperate time always required desperate measure. Now we go to uh, Muslims' articles about uh, Muhammad prophecies. You see there's tons of articles and all of them by Muhammad, like this one by Muhammad, look at his beard, how beautiful. Uh, Muhammad al-Shinawi, sound like an Egyptian. Muhammad Shinawi is a graduate of English literature at Brooklyn College, uh, New York. He studied the College of Hadith at the College of Hadith at the Islamic University of Medina. He is currently completing his Bachelor of Islamic Studies in uh, Mishakh University. He has a translated major work of International Islamic Publishing House, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So prophet is a prophet and here we will show you the prophecy of the prophet actually we can use the same ones the Muslim they use it to say to say this is a prophecy to prove Muhammad to be a false prophet as an example the Byzantine or the, Byz the, the Byzantine they will they lost and they will win this is what Muhammad said in the Quran in the chapter of the Roman uh, but he said he made a mistake he says in the, in a few years which mean between three as you see here in the translation between three to nine years in fact the Roman they never been victorious until more than 16 to 17 years after because in order to say victorious victorious is victory that's it the war is over and we are the winners so Muhammad here he exposed himself and as long we are talking about the Roman let us see what Muhammad is speak about the Roman proving him again to be a big fat false prophet sorry for using the fat but I love fat, by the way. I don't know. Many of you maybe don't like fat food. It's my favorite food. Let us see what Muhammad said about the Roman. <clears throat> okay, let us see. Oh. Uh, As long as Muhammad is a prophet, so whatever he says about the Roman, it should be true. Let us see what Muhammad he said. Muhammad he claimed, and this is Sahih Hadith, so Muslims cannot say it's a lie. This is Sahih Muslim, very authentic, very accurate. Hadith number 2898. Muhammad he said, the last hour would, would come when the Romans would uh, uh, form the majority amongst the people so Muhammad he made a prophecy that the number one population in the world before the judgment day is going to be the Roman what is the population of Italy today if there's anyone there his name is Tony hey Tony hey Tony Lamborghini what is the population Tony for Italy so Muhammad predicting that the Italian they will be before the judgment day well, if we can say the Italian by the way the Roman is not you know but we will say they are those are what is left of the Roman so Muhammad predict that the judgment day will not come until the Roman are the majority of mankind I mean, isn't this is stupid? 
this is, this is obviously stupidity. Muhammad, he never thought that the Roman are going to disappear. He thought they will increase in number, and not only that, they will increase in number, they will become the, maj the majority of mankind. The majority among the people. What people? Mankind. So when Muhammad he quote for us about the Roman, obviously Muhammad is a liar again. And this is a prophecy from a, from a prophet. You see, the Muslim, they cannot say this is not a prophecy. He's saying, talking about the last hour. And when you say the last hour would not come, huh? until the Roman would be forming the majority. Uh, uh, and actually, if you see, if you see the translation, hmm. the judgment day will come and the Roman will be majority of my, mankind. If you go to the translation, look what the translation is saying, just to show you how they, they fabricate in order to cover the ass of the prophet. I heard the message of Allah saying, the last hour would come when, when the Roman would form majority among the people. The translation is a close, but it's not really accurate. I mean, why you are doing that? The hour would come when the Roman formed the majority of among the people. So, as long as the Roman disappear, that means the judgment day should happen when the Roman was exist. Is that correct, guys? Do, do we understand what we are saying? As long the Roman are not exist no more, so the judgment day time based in the prophecy of this man who claimed to be a prophet passed long time ago. There is no Roman, and he is talking about them as the Romans. You see, he cannot. You cannot say we cannot say uh, he was meaning someone else. He said the Romans. The second you say the Romans, that is the Romans. That's it. There is no other solution. And he made the prophecies about fighting the Roman. And actually, in this article here, this guy, he speak about it. So look, from, from the statement of Muhammad, the verse in the Quran here proving Muhammad to be a false prophet because the fight did not happen as... Look, look at this, what he says, look at this. From 613, 619 CE, the Byzantines were absolutely uh, decimated by the Persian Empire losing territories of Antioch, then Damascus, then Armenia, then the most uh, crashes Jerusalem, then uh, uh, finally in Egypt. In his book, The History of the Decline of the, of the Fall of Roman, uh, Edward uh, G. Bone, even the quote for you, the name of historian, okay. He said, uh, 12 years Hercules were immediately declaring an end of the Roman imp uh, to end the, uh, the Roman Empire. Everyone saw the Byzantine as if they are death and deathbed. Those opponents of the prophet, like Obeid or Khalaf, mock this, uh, you know, which means Muhammad was, was mocked uh, because the Roman uh, lost. And, and by the way, here. We have to ask ourselves a question. This verse here, proving to us again that Muhammad was a heretic in that moment, a heretic, a Christian. He claimed to be Christian. How we know that? If we go to the chapter of our room, this is the chapter the guy is talking about. And here, don't ask the Muslims what does that mean. Elif Lam mean they do not know. But Muhammad is quoting a statement of the Aramaic, but he himself he could not explain it. If you have my book, you can you can you can understand what uh, this is A L M mean. The Roman Empire has defeated in the land in the land close by, but they even after his def this defeat of their uh, of of theirs will soon will be victorious. The translation of soon is not really too much accurate. It says fi bada. Bada in Arabic, it says three between between three to nine. All right. But look what happened. Then he says, within a few years, which Allah is the decision in the post in the in this translation. Let me change the translator. I mean, this guy, 
I mean, those Muslims, where they got their translation from? Let us get another donkey. I mean, those translations, all, all of them, they are donkeys. All right. And look at this translator. This translator, this is not translation, this is interpretation. He added the Persian, he added, there's no Persian in the, so what is that? I mean, different translation, hold on. We, who, we, we would choose who? I mean, all of them, they are the same madness. Uh, Arbery, let us see Arbery. In a few years, to God belong the command before and after, and on that day, believers shall rejoice. Okay, hold on. This is the proof that Muhammad is a false man. He was claiming at this moment that he is a Nasara, not a Christian Nasara, like Jehovah's Witnesses, a false cult. Otherwise, why the believers will rejoice? Who is the one who rejoice if the Roman they became victorious? Why the Muslims will be rejoicing if the Roman became victorious? The answer is very simple. At that moment, Muhammad, he claimed to be a Nasara, which is a cult born out of a Christianity. So when the Roman, they lost, they were making fun of Muhammad saying, look, your God lost, lost the war. So Muhammad here, he went to refute them. So he said, okay, they lost, but they will win. And he used the word Bada. But you know, all of us, we know that the Roman, they are fighting the Persian for more than 300 years. They lose, they win, they lose, they win. So saying that, it's not a big deal. Like imagine we have a war continues for hundreds of years. So the war will not really, uh, 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 this is endless war. And here you notice that Muhammad, he made a stupid mistake. He claimed that the Muslims, they will rejoice because the Roman will be victorious. But isn't it Muhammad, he, he says, attack the Romans so we can get the blonde girls? And if both of them, they are kuffar, why Muhammad is insulted for saying the Roman lost? So here Muhammad, he made a mistake. First of all, he says, Fi adna al-ard, the most closed land. The most closed land is where the Roman lost. Okay, which is the most, uh, most closed land where the Roman lost? If we go, uh, you know, you can get my book and read. We will see that the, 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 the chains of the, uh, of the history report of uh, battles, none of them report there is a land which is really close to Muhammad where they lost. Where, what is that? Where? Edna, it means the most, the nearest, the nearer, the most close part. Where is that? The big consequence, we know, like what happened in the, when, 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 when the uh, Persian, they conquer uh, Jerusalem. And this is what the story is about. Now you can go yourself, you do not need me, go and see when Jerusalem lost and when the Roman, they have a complete victory. And you will notice here it passed easy the nine years. It passed 16, 17, 18, depending on the historian. But however, it passed by many years. So Muhammad here, he made a false prophecy. Again, as long as we are talking about the Roman, what Muhammad he said about the Roman? Let us see some more prophecies from Muhammad about the Roman. The first one here, he said that the Roman will be majority of mankind, which is absolutely a lie. And by the way, if you lie in one prophecy, you are a false prophet. That's it. I mean, we are not need, we do not need really to prove more. But let us see more. <clears throat> Here the verse is speaking about, read carefully with me. On the day of Badr, the Roman had victory over the Persian. On the day of Badr. Uh, 
All right. The Roman, they have victory. Uh, the Roman had a victory over the Persian on the day of Badr. If we go to the article, which is written by this guy, he said, between the year 613 and 619, this is what he said, not me. All right? I'm just showing you what Muslim they say. It doesn't mean it's true. Just be careful. And we are using their reference to show you how they try uh, to fool you. So there is big events happened. Uh, six thirteen to six nineteen, everybody thought that the Roman they are in deathbed. This is what they are saying. But when better happened. There is two, there is, uh, there is the, the fight of Badr, you know, where Muhammad, he promised the Muslims to have victory, and they lost. He promised them that one of you can fight ten. They went to the war, and we will show you that as a false prophecy of Muhammad, and they lost the war. So here is 613, there is a small, a small uh, Badr and, uh, uh, and uh, the big Badr, all right, which is like... Uh, uh, you know, Muhammad tried to gain uh, uh, his loss again, attacking again. So, if they are saying that the attack or the loss of the Roman happened in 613, then better happen 624. According to the Muslims, not according to me. That passed the nine years and that make Muhammad a false prophet. Just based on what we see in the front of us. But I never take what Muslims they say because uh, uh, here this guy he did not mention that the verse in the Quran says the nearest land he did not tell us what is the nearest land if you see here they they give us a bracket of years six thirteen six nineteen so which one is the year where the Roman lost they will not tell you because they wanted we want they wanted to be um, you know like open so they can play the game. Which year? Where? Where the? Where the Roman? When Muhammad he mentioned that? Which? Which year? You know. It must be where the you know where the Roman were defeated, the biggest defeat, and that is Jerusalem, and that's why they were making fun of him. Here you will see losing Jerusalem and Antioch and Damascus. If we go in the Hadith, we will find the following. On the day of Badr, the Roman had victory over the Persian. So the believers were pleased with that question again. Why they are pleased with the Roman? Uh, were pleased. And then you will see here something exposing the lies about this miracle. Anyone notice what is that about this uh, prophecy? Anyone notice what, what how this ver how this hadith exposing all the lies about this prophecy? Anyone is reading with us? Who is reading the hadith in the front of us? Because I think you did not notice here we have a big problem. Who noticed? Nobody knows? Okay, look what the Hadith is saying. Read carefully with me, guys. On the day of Badr, the Roman had victory over the Persian, so the believers were pleased with that. Then the following was revealed. <laughs> Have you ever heard a prophecy coming about the past? Did you notice? Did 
guys do you understand what I'm saying when when the verse was revealed the, re, the verse revealed after the Roman they've been victorious okay so what is the prophecy Okay, I will tell you a prophecy now. Uh, 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 President Trump, he won the election 2016. Uh, okay, count my words. Count my words. Okay, here we go. I mean, it's so stupid to make a big fuzz about something. You are saying that the verses revealed after it. And let me tell you another prophecy. You know which no none of you knows okay uh, that there is a, a, a president uh, a macaroni in France he won the election last election yeah and I will tell you a prophecy uh, Putin he will be a who will be a president uh, in the year 2000 uh, uh, 2019 here we go not not far away I mean just and uh, 2018 too I mean, when Muslims, they make a, you know, and this is Sahih, by the way, they cannot say, uh, they cannot say this is something, you know, uh, false, and he's making things up. Do you guys save the reference? So here we prove many things about the Roman to be stupid, and they are making a prophecy out of something stupid. It's not even prophecy. But, you know, when you are desperate, you do desperate measurement. So you can save your profit from being exposed. I hope you guys, you are saving the reference. So you can refute Muslims with this. But even if this hadith does not exist, we are showing you that even by numbers, that this is a lie. Now, we continue. Uh, <clears throat> And this hadith, by the way, appear in many places. So, like, it's not only uh, it's not only in one uh, book; it's all over. Uh, the signs of the judgment day. The prophet said, "There is five signs have to become to happen." Uh, Involving, involving, uh, this is between two brackets, by the smoke. I mean, this is supposedly something will happen before the judgment day. Okay. But the last one, the Meccan and the split up of the moon. But the moon supposedly split in the time of Muhammad. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a false prophet. Because if we go to the chapter of the moon, Muhammad here or the God of Muhammad he made the false prophecy because he said that the moon split and the judgment day is very near very soon in the corner you see when the Aqtarabat is sa Aqtarabat it's like it's very very close so Muhammad he claimed already that the judgment day started otherwise what is the point of the sign of judgment day if the judgment day did not come since 1400 years ago this is additional false prophecy of the false prophet Muhammad he saw an eclipse and he claimed that the moon split and all of us you know you can go and search the Muslim they post for you pictures from NASA about a valley in the moon and they say to you here we go the proof that the moon split this is a valley if this is the split of the moon, we have many of the split for the earth. Have you ever heard of the biggest uh, 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 valley? It's called the Grand Canyon. This is not the split of the moon. This is just an eclipse. So Muhammad, he saw an eclipse. He claimed that the moon split. And by the way, those are verses Muhammad, he stole from the poetry of Imrul Qais. It's exactly as it is. 
as Amr al Qais, he, you know, he said. Let us find the reference. Hamad is a thief. He took this poetry from this man. ذات الساعة وانشق القمر عن غزال صاد قلبي ونفر أحور أقد حرت في أوصافه نائس الطرف بعينه حير حور مرة يوم العيد you see all those uh, uh, signs the, the, the lines drawn here all of those are verses taken as it is from the poetry and Muhammad he added to his Quran he changed only here like word from Danat he make it in the Quran اقتربت let me let me show you what I'm I'm uh, I'm saying. I, I don't know if I can make it. Uh, uh, hold on. Let me. I need to uh, take snapshots so we put them close to each other. Hold on. Give me a second. Just to show you how the thief do his business. Okay. <clears throat> I took a snapshot so we can put them together and you can see with me. I think now you can see it, right? So look with me. I know you don't speak Arabic, but I think you can compare between the images, the two images. Uh, Look with me carefully. This is the Quran. Iqtarabat as saa wa nshaqa al qamar. As saa wa nshaqa al qamar. Exactly as it is. Do you see it? So, what the different between the first one? The word here is iqtarabat. The word here is denat. Both of them, they mean the same meaning. Denat mean get a closer. Tarabat mean get a closer. A thief. Na'isu tarfi. Muhammad, he took it in the Quran. He put it too. Faramani fata'ata fa'aqar. Muhammad, he took it. He put it in the Quran too. Fadarakni ka hashimi al-muhtadar. Muhammad, he took it. He put it in the Quran too. And the list of the poetry, not only those, he took a long list of the, the same poetry of this man. This is a poetry written before, long before Muhammad. If you have my book, you will see them all there. I don't know how many of you have my books, but if you have it, you can read in details about it. So Muhammad, not only he made a false prophecy, he liked the poetry of this man, but this man is not talking about the moon splitting. This man, he saw his beautiful girlfriend. So he is flirting with her. He says, the judgment day is near and the moon split, which means the moon show up in the, in the middle of the darkness. He's talking about his girlfriend. From a deer who hunted my heart and making like make it come out of my chest. You see the word hur even coming from here. She is like a whore. She is a whore. But this is before Islam. I cannot even describe how beautiful she is. You know, she have an eyes to drive you crazy. And she, they have like a, so Muhammad, he took all of this and he put it in his Quran. Let us continue with the false prophet Muhammad. All right. If we go and see in the hadith, we will find in this reference of false prophecies in the Quran. Endless ones. But one of the prophecy I found about Muhammad, he said, but I need to find it. I don't know if I'm going to find it in this website, the English website, where in the judgment day, 
for every woman she will have 50 men because men there they will be rear there's no men left so every every woman uh she she will in, in the other side there's 50 men every man every woman let me see if i can find the hate hold on i don't think they will translate this one here but we will see um I'm trying to remember the hadith exactly as it is. Let's see. No. Let us see. We need to search more. I'm trying to remember exactly how the uh, how the hadith. Okay, hold on. Now we are in a... Yeah, let us see this one. But there's many of them. Uh, here we go. Do you see it? And this is Sahih al-Bukhari. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. I will narrate to you a hadith which none others than I will tell you about it, about after it. Who is talking? A guy reporting what Allah Messenger said. I heard Allah Messenger saying, from among the parents, the, the, sorry, the, the portents of the, uh, of the hour, the following things will happen. Religion knowledge or religious knowledge will decrease by the death of religious uh, learned men. If you go in the article, this guy, he claimed that the Muslims, they will be the majority of mankind. And Islam will enter every house. But here we find Muhammad saying that is the opposite. Islam would decrease and actually there's a hadith I just remember I will show it to you where Muhammad said literally that Islam is dead but let us see this one first so religious knowledge would decrease by the death of religious learned men so all every religious man is dead there's no religious man is left then religious ignorance will prevail which mean liars and st stupid ones, they will prevail. There will be prevalence of open illegal sexual intercourse. People will have sex, but well, there's no need for marriage. But this is what's happening before Islam and after Islam. And actually Islam uh, promote opening uh, sexual relationship. The Muslim enter now, they promote what, promote what it's called the orf. Orfi, which means you ask a woman to sleep with you and you consider it as a marriage, but the fact it's not. It's not even there is no witnesses for it. And Muhammad, he promote the Zawaj al muta which is uh, one night or two or three night stands. If you remember, Muhammad, he says that any, a man and a woman, they agree to live together for three days, three nights. So if having open sex relationship is a sign from judgment day, that's mean we have it since time of Muhammad because he is the first one who promote this in Islam. Allah Apostle said, if any a man, a man or a woman agree, and here they put for you between two brackets to marry temporarily. What marry temporarily? Have you ever heard of somebody marrying temporarily? Islam as a cult, as a satanic cult, promote temporarily sexual relationship and to cover up this relationship, they call it temporarily. Do you see? Hey, Muawiyah, what is that flag? Uh, and by the way, just to show you the ignorance of the Muslims. Muslims, they call themselves names. Like this guy here, his name is Muawiyah. And he is putting us for us, supposedly, the flag of ISIS. Okay, But let me show you. This is Muawiyah. But Muawiyah, 
mean, excuse my language, in Arabic mean a bitch. And especially a, a, a dog, a female dog. So how you are calling yourself such a name and you are bringing to us Islam? I will tell you why. Because you are a stupid, you do not know what the name means. So now you are calling yourself bitch Islam. Or sorry, I mean the female bitch Islam. That because you are ignorant and you are just a copy paste. You have no idea what you are. What I mean, amazing. Their ignorance always speak for them. You could not find a better name. And by the way, the name he is talking about is the family of Abu Sufyan, where Muhammad, he bought them to convert to Islam. He could not make them convert to Islam. And the Quran speak about them and he says, well, we can talk about it later. Muhammad, he gave to everyone from this family who they are criminals, warlord, 100 camels so they can accept Islam. Because Muhammad, he needed them to promote or to, to force Islam by the sword. But let us go back here. What kind of cult saying that a man and a woman, they can agree to sleep together and then we put between two bracket temporarily marriage. How marriage can be temporarily? So Muhammad saying a sign of the judgment day that people, they would have sex without marriage. Here you go. There's no marriage. And people have sex without marriage since the beginning of time it's not something new is that correct guys i mean this is this is uh, this is something happened always it's not something like the uh, when we when you say a sign of judgment day that's mean this has never happened and it is will happen in the future muhammad himself had his him, himself he is born four years after his father's death so how muhammad came to existence Imagine I die and my wife after four years she have a baby and now he's my son And then he says let us go let's go back to the topic Here we show you that sexual relationship before marriage is something Normal happened and the Muslims they are the most ones who practice that muta. Do you know guys what muta mean? How many of you knows muta here what muta they say muta marriage I mean, how you call it marriage? Muta mean pleasure, sexual pleasure. So you are contracting a woman to sleep with you and you have to pay her money. It's not for free. And then you, you say this is marriage? It's not for free. You, the woman, you, you have to say to her, I want to have sex with you. And I offer you $10. She have to repeat after you saying, and he have to say sorry you have to add the, the timing like for how long like for two hours or three hours and then she have to repeat says saying i agree to sleep with you for ten dollars for ten for two hours if both agree on that this is muta this is the prophet who they are trying to be proud about how this is, can be a prophet prophet of what this is prophet of adultery he himself is an adulteress and he is promoting adultery let us continue And here Muhammad, he continues speaking about the signs of judgment day. He says, women will increase in number and men will decrease in number. So much so that 50 women will be looked after by one man. Do we have any Muslim in the bushes? So the sexual ratio or the gender ratio, according to Muhammad, will be 50 to 1. Is that possible? Well, good for you, Johans brothers. I'm happy that you became a, you accepted Christ. They're good for you. 
why I don't wish a happy Easter to the Orthodox. My friend, yesterday I did, in the video yesterday, and even yesterday I posted a, a video of the Holy Fire in Jerusalem, and we spoke about it for more than 15 minutes. Correct, guys? Did we? And then I posted again the the the, the service in Russia, where the Holy Fire miracle came to Moscow, and people were celebrating uh, the service there. I posted it in my news uh, page in uh, in Facebook and in YouTube. And we do not need to keep repeat Happy Easter, for we enjoy Easter every day. It's not, Easter is not today; is not yesterday. Easter. Easter is every day in our life because we are believers in the uh, in the living Lord. This is what the Easter is about. It's not about a day. It's about that day. Something incredible happened. That day, the Messiah, he overcome death by death. We go back to our topic. Which church you go to? This is my church. You see, I have 740 people now listening. This is a beautiful church. The Lord, the Messiah, he says, every two meet and mention my name, I will be between them. Church is not a building, my friend, and I do not need a priest to bless me. I'm blessed by the Lord, and he is the only one who can bless people. Uh, Maybe a priest, he go to the church and he do a service once a uh, once a week. I do my service every day, sometime twice or try three times a day. So here we have a better church. And here we make people understand and we make them uh, 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 like get closer to the truth. And that is what the Lord, he wants. He don't want just people to go to the church and wave their hands to Jesus, Jesus and say, hey, we love you. And we sing some songs. And then the priest, he make a speech, which he called the same speech last year. Nothing new. Because they are just doing a job, like the Muslims today. There's many priests today, they are just doing a job, the same as Muslims. Fake. He don't even make a speech of his own. He is just reading for him, for you, from a book was given to him, and every priest around is using that. So we need a real, you see, the, the problem, the problem, you mentioned something now, we don't want to change the topic, but we have a, we have a problem in our churches. Churches became a traditional to the point, there's nothing new. You stand up, he stand up. You say certain words, he say certain words. The same as the Muslims. But this is not the church. Church was always a place to teach, not only to preach. So you go out in the street, your child go in the street, he learn nothing. Yes, you are reading the verses from the gospel, but he is not even uh, giving interpretation. He is not answering questions. What about people They are saying things against Christianity? They don't give time for that. So you as a Christian, you go in the street and then you see someone is an atheist attacking you or someone is a Muslim and you do not know what to answer. Why? Because your priest is doing a job. He's not a priest. Here we arm you and we teach you how to refute them. So you can bring them. You can be the same as Peter. You can be a fisherman who bring them to the to Christ and not only a selfish person who just go to the church and he sing a song to Jesus and that's it, I'm a Christian. Christian who don't bring Christians or make, make people accept Christ, he is no Christian. You need to ask yourself, in whatever your age is, okay, how many people you convinced in your life to accept the Christ? If you say zero, so what do you accomplish? The Bible says and speak about three servants who been given investment by the Lord. What happened? There is one of them he saved it for himself. That is the one is not blessed. The Bible is telling you exactly what the Lord he wants from you. So don't come back to the Lord one day and you just say, you are, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. Anyway, so we go back to our topic. Here, here Muhammad, he is making a false prophecy. Because to have such a thing, that is impossible. Anyone knows why? Anyone knows why? That this is impossible. Why it's impossible that a man, every 50 men, they will have a woman.
Anyone want to use his brain? Who want to use his brain? No, this is not the only problem. Yeah, we know that the, the world population, uh, like, you know, we will be, the, the ratio will be like uh, 50 to 1, okay? Which means if we are 50 billion, uh, uh, then 1 billion women. 1 billion women and 50, this means 51 billion. 1 billion women, 50 billion men. Okay, but what's the problem with this? No, 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 I'm, I'm not talking about reality. Uh, I'm talking about if this if this is really happened, what does that mean? That means this, this is the most stupid thing because that means the human being race is gone. How you can reach the point that you have 50 to 1 if because now every man they have a chance only to make one woman pregnant, give a, give a child. Is that correct? So how we can have 50 to, uh, to 1? Because in order to have 50 to 1, we have to have 50 child who they are females and one she is uh, uh, 50 child they are male and one she is a female and that's mean the women before she die she have to generate 50 child every woman <laughs> actually 51 you know what I mean because how we can reach that number if we have 50 to 1 that means the number was decreasing in, in a dramatical way to the point that there's always, I mean, like the, the women number is, is, is decreasing and the men number is increasing. You see, if Muhammad says the opposite, we can say that it's possible because it's still the, the, the one who will get the babies is the women. You can have one man and 100 women, and still he can make them all, you know, uh, deliver babies. But you cannot do the opposite. Are you guys following with me? Are, are you following with me? With my uh, limited English? Do you understand what the problem? If we have one man to 50 women, that can be possible because, okay, he has sex with all 50, but all of them, they are bringing females. Okay. But 50 men and one female, still she cannot have 50 child in nine months. She will have one child. Right? Yeah, it's okay. Hold on. It says, sorry. It says it says fifty men, fifty women for one man. Sorry, it's my it's my mistake. Fifty men for what? what so here, the problem is that fifty women they will be. So, the men according to this hadith, actually this hadith it says the opposite. But in according to this hadith, women will increase in number, and that will make the women deliver. Only females. Is that a mistake by Allah? And that will be possible because a man he can make a woman, he can make 50 women have babies. But how the women, all of them, they will have babies, all of them they are females, unless Allah he wanted that. And why Allah he wanted that? And how Muhammad just the hadith, he in the same hadith he said that sexual intercourse without marriage will be the most popular thing. Okay, the women they will have sexual intercourse with who? Let me see if I can find the hadith, the other one, which is opposing this one, where it says that men will be the majority of mankind. All right. <laughs> Let's see. If you ask Muslim, by the way, why a Muslim man, he married four? What the Muslim, they would say to you? They say to you because there is more females than male. Okay. Why Allah making men a lot less? Uh, let us see. I'm trying to find the other hadith which is saying exactly the opposite. Actually, I was I was I was looking for the other one, not this one. But anyway, this one appeared in the way. Uh,
okay actually we can use you see I'm, I'm trying to use the other one see if we can find it until now we found nothing here and one of the signs of a false prophet, if they say the opposite, Muhammad always, he say things which oppose the other thing. And by the way, hold on. There's a hadith, uh, if we cannot find this one in English, let us try the other hadith about the Roman. We go back to the Roman. Um... Uh, All right, 50 women for one man. That's good. I'm sure many men, they wish that to happen now. Um, There is a hadith about an army of the Roman and the army of the Muslims. Give me a second. You see, I don't like to mention something without showing the reference. So let us see. And sometimes it's easy to find it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but we will find it. I don't want to make you wait for long, but it should appear. Let us see here. I always I don't feel good if I mention something I cannot show it. So give me a, give me a, have patience with me. Uh, you have to remember the heath is exactly as it is to find it and that is the difficult thing
Okay. Maybe, maybe we found it. Hold on. So remember the hadith we mentioned to you, <clears throat> Muhammad, he said, every 50, there will be, every 50 women, they will be serving uh, one man. So the population will be 50, uh, if we have 50 billion, will be 50, we will be 1 billion as men. All right. Mean. Uh, uh, I'm not getting lucky. Let's try something else. All right. Uh, let us use this one. It's not really the one, one I'm looking for. Uh, here we go. Okay, let us see. This. Let us use this one. I come to the message of Allah during. The campaign of Tabuk, the camp the, 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 like when Muhammad he want to attack Tabuk. Tabuk is where the Roman is. When he was in his tent and uh, made of leather, so I sat in the front of the tent and message of Allah, uh, so enter, etc. I said, uh, all of me, all message of Allah, enter. I said, all of me, what is all of you, all of you, all of me, what does that mean? <laughs> then he said, oh, Auf, remember six things that will occur before the hour comes. One which will will be is my death. Muhammad predicting that the hour will not come until he die. I mean, look at this. Okay. I was very shocked and I was saddened at that. He said, count that as the first, then will come the conquest of uh, uh, Baytul Maqdis. Number two, we will attack uh, Jerusalem. And then, a disease which will appear among you and will cause you and your offspring to die as murder. So the Muslims will die by disease and will purify your deeds. Then will be the much worth among you that if a man were to be given 100 dinar, he would still be dissatisfied and there will be interpolation among you. You will not have any Muslim in the house, any Muslim house, untouched. So all the Muslim houses will be hurt. Then there will be a treaty between you and the Roman. And then they will betray you and march against you with 80 banner under each of which, which will be 12,000 troops. Okay, hold on. I'm going to compare between the Hadith of 50 women to one man 50 women to one man and the hadith where it says that the majority of mankind is the roman do you remember it or we should show it do you remember the hadith says the majority of mankind are the roman let's get it again i want to find the other hadith but i could not find it but it's okay and here you will you will uh, uh, you will notice how you connect the dots together I heard Allah messenger may peace be upon him saying the last hour would not come when the Roman would be forming the major of uh, among ma uh, 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 people of mankind I'm going to use the hadith of 50 women to one man okay 50 women to one man that mean what that's mean every man he will make, he can make every nine months, 50 babies. Is that correct, guys? 
I'm using that this hadith. Fifty women, women from every man they can make fifty babies every nine months. Do you agree? That mean a man he have fifty women. How many babies he can make in a twenty years average? One man. How many he can make in twenty years average? Now, for sure, women they can have babies for more than twenty years. You know, one thousand. Every man, he will have one thousand. Are you getting close to where I'm getting now? You understand, guys, what I'm to, uh, like, wh where, I, where I'm going to lead you? Who noticed now what the problem? Do you notice the problem? Muhammad he said, there is eighty thousand flag. Let us go back to the hadith, the other one. Eighty banner, each banner underneath of it is twelve thousands. Is that correct? Okay. If every man, every man, he can make one thousand baby, one thousand baby. So who of you want to give me the population of the whole world based on this? Because remember, the most majority of mankind are the Roman. And the rest are the Muslims. So what is the population that the Roman will be? Anyone knows? Who is good in uh, mathematics? Too many know. They will be small. The population of the Roman will be very small. The population of the world. If the Roman are the majority of the mankind, listen carefully. We just showed you the other hadith where it says, that what, five, what five trillions? Guys, how you come with this? You guys are really amazing with the mathematics. Okay, hold on. And by the way, I'm very bad in mathematics. But let us, let us use the calculator. We have 80, 80 flag. 80 flag every flag underneath of it is 12,000 correct every flag underneath of it is 12,000 so 80 x 12 960,000 soldier is that correct okay so let us put there 900 Nine hundred sixty thousand soldiers. Now, if every man he can have one thousand, by the way, he can have more. We made just the average of twenty years only. Women giving babies, just twenty years. Okay. If every man can have up to one thousand. Baby, that's mean. What is the total of the population of the Roman? Or at least the men for now. We divide 960 to 1000. That's mean there is 96 men from the Roman. What 96 million? What 96 million guys? What are you talking about? Guys, are you okay? We have, if we divide, if we divide the 960, listen carefully, we have 960,000 men total. 
This is the whole army. This is the whole men. All the men. All the men. And if every man, he made 1,000 baby. Where are those babies coming from? From their father. Correct? So if we divide nine, 960, that means the total population of the Roman, the fathers at that time, is 960 people. The parents, the parents is 960 people. Are you getting my, uh, 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 the conclusion? If we have 960,000, this is the army of the Roman. That means this is all their men. That's it, all the army there. The army in the Muslims from one side, the army of the Roman from one side. But remember, the, the Roman are the majority of mankind. The Roman are the majority of mankind. So the Muslims are small, very small in number. That means the majority of mankind is 960,000 people. And now let us add the 50, uh, uh, for every one of them, 50,000 women. So we can see the population of the whole world. Or the Roman, the majority. Anybody can do that? So now we say, as long every man he is going to marry or have uh, 50 women, so we say 960 X. 50 the whole population of the world will be 48 million 48 what hold on to be sure no uh 960 x50 yeah 48 million that's it this is the population of the world or the population of the roman the roman there will be the majority of mankind by being 48 million this is the prophecy of your prophet No, no, we don't change the topic. Why you change the topic? This is what the topic. The topic is about Muhammad. You don't like it, you can leave. What do you mean? If Muhammad is a prophet and he says that the, 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 the Roman will be the majority of mankind, so what, the, what is the mankind number then? So Muhammad predicted that when the Roman reach the 48 million, the judgment day will come. Because this is when the Muslims and the Roman, they will fight. 960,000 will be fighting the Muslims. However, those 960, they are the men of the majority of the population, which is the Roman. Are we getting the point? Who did not get it? Anyone did not understand? Isn't it, this is clear that Muhammad is a false prophet? You see, I could not find you the other hadith where it says that uh, the, it's the opposite will be what he's saying about men and women. But we will go with this because if Muhammad here is saying this uh, he, and he is a prophet, well, he, this is a false prophecy. This is always a prophet prophesying about the, 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 the end of the time. The last hour would not come. They will come when the Roman are... The, 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 they would form the majority of mankind. Okay, this is the same time when the Roman, they will be fighting with the Muslims. And what is the ratio of the, uh, of the war? Actually, there's other hadith, I, I will try to find it, where Muhammad speak not only about uh, the numbers of the Muslim, the Rom Roman, he speak about the, the number of the Muslims. 
But sometimes when you want to find something, it's like, you know, it's like Mission Impossible sometimes. So here he speak about it. Let me see if I can find And by the way, this is Sahih. The Muslim cannot say this is weak. I mean, they cannot, they cannot deny it. They, can, they cannot try, escape it. They cannot escape this. This is Sahih. But let me see. If I find the other hadith, let me take a snapshot for this. So if we go back, we do not need to do it again. Uh, let us see. Yeah, look like in this website. Let us see. <clears throat> Will be fun if I can find the other one. Okay, here, look at this hadith here. Okay. <laughs> Look at this hadith here. Muhammad, he is making poo poo here. He says, the Prophet said, the best number companion is four. Uh, uh, companions is four. The best detachment of 400 and the best of the army is 4,000. And 12,000 men will not be defeated as a result of a smallness of number. What does that mean? You let, let, you, go, let you think about it then. Uh, <clears throat> let us see. Anyone notice here what this hadith here, what, what Muhammad, he just made a mistake in this hadith? What is the mistake here? Muhammad he claimed that always his army will form either those are the best numbers for Allah 400 4,000 12,000 right and 12,000 will not be overcome through a smallness of number but didn't he say just a, a second ago that there is an army and their every flag will be 12,000 from the Roman? So how a small number of the Muslims will overcome the 12,000s? You remember? Let us go back. Who is the 12,000s? Who is the one with the 12,000s? It is the Roman. So Muhammad predicting that the, main, the small number cannot win against the 12,000s. And who are they the one small number? The Muslims. <laughs> but this is, what, this is different what he's saying. That in the judgment day, the Muslims will be victorious. Let us continue. How many of you heard the Muslim saying, uh, that the, the uh, Islam will dominate the world? Don't they say that? Islam will dominate the world, the Prophet he predict. And actually in this article, this guy, he said clearly that the Muslims will, uh, uh, the global globalization of Islam, right? Okay. Let us see this hadith. Let us close the one we opened them already. This is the population of Italy. <laughs> All right. Uh, look at this hadith. 
the hour of resurrection will not occur as long as anyone say Allah Allah what does that mean Muhammad he did contradict himself again in one hadith he's saying the majority of mankind they will be the Muslims in different hadith it says the most the minority of mankind will be the Muslims but the Islam of even was of a yaud or even let us find it Islam initiated as a small something strange which means small in number and would revert to all position being strange and stranger all right and this is a sahih hadith so the Muslim cannot say that this is not true so how in the article they say that in the signs of the judgment day that Islam will be global this matter will certainly reach every place Touched by night and day, Allah will not have a house of a mud or even for except of a mud, house of a mud, for except that Allah will cause this religion to enter it, by which the honorable will be honored and the disgraceful will be disgraced. So Muhammad is claiming that all mankind will become Muslims in this hadith, because every house will have Muslims. So how you say in the other hadith that the Roman are the majority of mankind and they will fight the Muslims? And the judgment they will not come until the Roman are the majority and then they will have an army of contain 80, 80 flag, every flag underneath of it is 12,000 troops. This is a total contradiction. And here he says, The hour of the resurrection will not occur as long as anyone say Allah, Allah. Which means when the judgment day happened, there's no Muslim left. But in the hadith, Muhammad, he said that in the judgment day, the Muslims, anyone remember what will happen in the judgment day? Who remember the chapter where there is a beast will come? Anyone remember it? The beast will come. Nobody remember? Anyone remember which verse in the Quran? At Jassasa. Yeah, which which uh, which uh, let us let us find it in the hadith first and then we go to the Quran. As long Muhammad he mentioned this one. A judgment day when it come, there's no Muslim left, nobody saying Allah no more. Right. Um all of those are fiction stories about a Jassasa, but I'm I'm uh Oh, I'm, I'm trying to find mm. <clears throat> okay look, look with me Muhammad here is giving us six signs will happen for the judgment day the appearance of the Dajjal then the beast will come from the earth then the Sun will rise from the West then the Sun will rise from the West what is the Roman they are gone continue Do the good deeds, 
before six things happened. The rising of the sun from the west, place of it is sitting. The smoke, there's a smoke will come and many people will kill, will be killed. The beast of the earth, that the Jaldan, that the false messiah, and which will happen of each of you before each of you before his death before his death is that a false prophecy muslims and here they says they added the end which will happen to the people of the day of resurrection but in the hadith doesn't say that muhammad was speaking to people who are alive in his time do this before this happened he's talking to the people in front of him so muhammad he predicted that be those before they die, those things will happen. The false messiah will come, the beast will come, etc. How we can prove that? Anyone remember a hadith we mentioned before? Anyone remember? There is a hadith where Muhammad he said to a man saying to him that judgment day will not come or he, sorry judge the day, judge the, uh, the judgment day will come before this man die anyone remember it who remember so judgment day will not come or will come before this man he die so Muhammad obviously is speaking about people who live in his time maybe a few generations after maybe a few generation before let me find the hadith so we can show it to you A young boy from the Moria, uh, uh, he, he like he was passed. He passed by the Holy Prophet, and he was in my age. So this guy is talking about the past. Thereupon, Allah Messenger said, "If he lives long, he would not grow very old till the last hour would come." Do you see it, guys? So all the prophecies Muhammad he mentioned about the one which is 50 men will be equal to one uh, woman or 50 women they will be equal to one man or a jassasa the beast the smoke uh, the Roman there will be the majority of mankind all of those have to happen before this guy die if there's any Muslim here he will say I'm lying did your prophet say that this man who is a young boy, this young boy, before he get old, not only be, not before he die, no, 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 not before his die, not before his death, he will not even, in Arabic it says kahl. Kahl is a person over over 30. A kahl is a person, he is over 30. So before he become 30 years old, the judgment day will come. Oh, how young the boy was. Nine years, ten years, six years, two years. All of this is a false prophecy. I mean, until now, we saw nothing true. You see, uh, always, always, uh, look, this is the same hadith, Sahih al Bukhari. The Muslim, they cannot say it's weak. This is Sahih al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. This is Sahih Muslim. That one is Sahih Bukhari. So what the Muslim they say to us? Uh, Muhammad, uh, this hadith is fabricated. They will say this hadith is weak. If this slave should live long, he would not reach the age 
that age, but the judgment day will establish. I mean, the hadith is very clear, isn't it clear? So look what need to happen. Muhammad predict that women, they will be 50 to 1, or men, 50 to 1 women. Muhammad, he predicted that the Roman, they will be the majority of mankind. Muhammad, he predicted that the Roman, they will become the men, the total majority of the Roman, when they attack the Muslims at the end of the time, is 960,000 men. And the total of the population of the Roman, which is 50 to 1, 50 women to 1, there will be uh, uh, 48 million. Muhammad, he predicted that 12,000, they will not lose a war. But in the same time, he said that the Roman, there will be 12,000 and every flag. So all of this is, is a madness. It's a collection of opposing each other. When Muhammad he says that the 50 women, they will be equal, they, they, every 50 women, they will have one man. Every 50 women, they will have one man. That's mean that Allah is making the gender of the females only exist. Why? Who is the, what is the reason for the men to be a lot less to the point it's one man to one man? When Muhammad says one man, one, one, women, one woman will have 50 men, which is the opposite. When Muhammad, I mean, all of this is, is, is a, this guy, he is a mad person saying things does not make sense. And yet the Muslim, they claim that this is a prophecy. When Muhammad, he said the black dog is the devil. Is that something come to be proven that the black dog is evil and he is the devil? What else? We have tons of stories about Muhammad making false prophecies. Anyone remember a prophecy Muhammad he said about the Jews? Which we can connect here to this. The Roman, the Dajjal, the beast. Do remember, Muhammad, he said that the judgment day, when the judgment day uh, come, the Muslims will slaughter the Jews. And if a Jew, he try to hide behind the tree, the tree and the rock, they will scream, says, hey, there's a Jew behind me, kill him. Because Muhammad is a fascist. He's like Hitler. Anyone notice here what is the problem with this? Just think about it as a, as a prophecy for now. Anyone notice what the problem with this? How Muhammad, he says, the judgment day when it's come, there's no Muslim left. Because nobody say, Allah, Allah. Correct? And yet he says the Muslims in the judgment day, they are going to be killing the Jews. There is endless hadith about judgment day. Let us see if we can share more, which is showing contradiction. Uh, <clears throat> Look at this hadith. Let us let me I just found something. A sign of the judgment day. <clears throat> if a slave she gave birth to her lord, that is a sign of judgment day. Guys, so Judgment Day started with Abraham. Isn't it Abraham who married his slave girl and she gave birth to him? I'm trying to find the hadith. Is that, is that, uh, here we go. Okay. Let us see this one. 
When is going to be the hour of doom? They asked the prophet. He said, the one who asks is about it is a, a better informed than inquire. I, however, narrate some of these signs. When a slave girl gave birth to her to, 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 the, to her master, when a naked woman barefooted would come the chief of the people. <laughs> <laughs> barefooted <laughs> these are some of the signs and then here by the way uh, uh, if you remember once uh, uh, a muslim he uh, he called for me a person he called uh, called me and he saw talk uh, he said uh, do you know that the prophet he predicted that the arab they will have high buildings read carefully these are some of the signs when the shepherd of the black camel would exalt themselves in building and the one of the signs of the doom the doom of the five happening world in in the end scene which no one knows but Allah how you know how you say no one knows but Allah but you are saying they are to us there are five uh, let me let me let me see <clears throat> it is endless I'm just trying to connect the dots for you Let us see, hold on. I'm just trying to find you some uh, some extra reference just for the sake of fluffing uh, okay Let us see this one here. Oh, cannot be found as usual. This website is usually sometime, I think they don't publish in purpose. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. All right. What about the order? What about the order of the signs of the judgment day? Another proof that Muhammad is a false prophet. According to this, what is the first thing will happen as a sign of the judgment day? Read carefully with me. The first is of the signs will appear the rising of the sun in the place of setting and the coming forth of the beast against mankind so this is number two 
All right. And then, uh, where is the list? Should there is should be the hadith says the rest. I mean, how he say here? Hold on. How many signs of the judgment day? There are ten. Do you see here? In different hadith, he says there are six. In different hadith, he says there are nine. In different hadith, I mean, Muhammad, this the, he have all the numbers working for him. Uh, really be careful here. What is the first thing will happen? That the jal, there are ten. That the jal, the smoke, and the rising of the sun from the west. So the rising of the sun from the west will be what? Will be the last. Correct? And by the way, he said 10. Did he say 10? Where are the 10? I mean, the man, he said there are 10. And then here, we don't have 10. Go back a little bit. You will see Muhammad say that the first sign is where the sun set. Or, sorry, the sun appear from where it set. Let us see. Read carefully with me. The first sign is the appearance of the Dajjal. No, the first sign should be the sun. This is a false translation. Hold on. I heard the message of Allah saying, as saying the first sign out of the signs of the appearance of the Dajjal would be, yeah, would be the appearance of the sun. So the first sign will be the appearance of the sun. But if we go down, Muhammad saying the opposite. Do you see? There's 10 signs have to happen at the Jal, then the smoke and the rising of the sun from the west. Okay, look here, Muhammad, he added more signs of the judgment day. Allah Apostle, he said, or we said we said to him you know discussing the, the the last hour thereupon he said the last hour would not come until 10 signs appear look how the 10 signs is to change land is sliding in the east which east and land is sliding in the west which west and land is sliding in the peninsula of arabia the smoke the the jal the beast, the Gog of Magog, and the rising of the sun from the west, and the fire which emit from the lower part. Okay, here, Muhammad, uh, counting for us 10 signs. One of them is Gog and Magog. Who is Gog and Magog? Gog and Magog is a huge population where it's going to invade the earth. In a previous hadith, we showed you how that the population of mankind is going to be, according to that hadith, which we were able to show, 50 to 1, 50 women to one man. In different hadith, we showed you that the population of all, the majority of mankind is nine, 960,000 men. They are the Roman. Now here we have Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog are kind of people who they are going to dominate the earth. The Muslim will use the bows, arrows, and shield of Gog and Magog as firewood for seven years. This is a sign of the Judgment Day. So Muhammad predict that the Judgment Day will come, and Gog and Magog, they are using bows and arrows 
as weapon. Is that accurate, Muslims? I thought nobody using bows and arrows long time ago. But Muhammad is claiming that the judgment day will not come unless, and this is one of the signs of Gog and Magog, and Gog and Magog, they will shield, they will, they, they will shoot at the Muslims for seven years using their arrows, and the Muslim they will use the wood of those uh, arrows and shield for food fire for, for wood fire. It look like Muhammad do not know that Saudi Arabia is full of oil. All right? Let us continue. All those stories about Gog and Magog. Uh, let us see. Here, Muhammad here reporting again the same uh, uh, signs which will happen in the Gog of Magog uh, or the Jud Judgment Day. But I want to show you. All our funny stories, I mean, they are endless. Okay, here guys, look at this. Muhammad, he keeps saying there is 10 signs of the Judgment Day. If you, if you collect those hadith and you make them a print, you print them together, and you put them next to each other, you will see Muhammad, how he changed the 10 signs. Look at this. The 10 signs of the Judgment Day is what? Read careful with me. Land sliding in the east, land sliding in the west, land sliding in the uh, peninsula of Arabia, at the Jal, the beast and the earth, Gog and Magog, the rising of the sun from the west, the fire which emit uh, from the lower part of Adan, which was supposedly in Yemen. All right. If you search for the same same reference about 10 signs of the judgment day, you will see how the order changed and not only the orders, even the hadith itself changed, even what is contained inside. Let us see if we can show such a thing. <clears throat> oh boy you see this uh, search engine is not helping you know you search for something it shows you things have nothing to do with what are you looking for Hold on. <clears throat> okay, look at this hadith here. The hour shall not establish until the time is considered and the year is like a month, and the month is like a week, and the week is like a day, and the day is like an hour, and the hour like flare of the fire. Okay. The signs of the the, the signs of the, the the hour they are ten. Number one, the the jal, the false Christ, the smoke, and the rising of the sun from the west. 
In the other hadith, he start with the slide in the east, slide in the west, slide in the north, etc. Uh, you see it? The last hour will not come until two parties of Muslims confront of each other and their large scale of massacre among them and the claim of both of them is the same. Muhammad, he claimed that there is a big massacre will happen between two parts of the Muslims. This is a sign of the judgment day. But this has happened always. I mean, Muslims, they keep killing each other always. Even they killed his grandsons, big massacre, or nothing, no judgment day happened. Uh, look at this. Just to show you that Muhammad is a false prophet. The sun eclipse during the time of the apostle, may Allah peace upon him, he uh, happened. So he stood great, like he is very anxious what will happen. Fearing that it might be the doomsday. Muhammad, he is a prophet of God. And he believed that the sign of the judgment day is an eclipse. Do you see it, Muslims? Let me give you this hadith because this is what happened when Muhammad he mentioned the moon, the moon is split and the judgment day is near. Let me share this hadith with you. The sun eclipse, I hope people will save it so next time I will want to look for it because sometimes, guys, it's hard to find things, you know, because, I mean, it's endless. And this website, the search engine does not have like a uh, like search word by word exactly. Like you put something, it show you whatever I have to do with the word. So Muhammad he thought that sign of the judgment day is the eclipse. Why? If Muhammad is a prophet of Allah, he should know better. And this is confirmed the hadith where Muhammad he speak to the Muslim saying that before you die, the following things will happen. You remember? Didn't Muhammad he said, and this is the hadith in front of you, has to to do good deeds before six things happen. Talking to who? Talking to people who live in front of him. When you say, when I say to you, do those things before the six things happen, and those things happen. Like if Muhammad he meant they will happen through thousands of years, there is no need to say to those people. Uh, do things, do good deeds before those things happen because they will not, you know, they say, just say good, do deeds before you die. He is saying, do good deeds before those things happen because they will happen before they die. Do you understand me, guys? And yeah, they were six, now they are, uh, they were ten, they are six now. You see the number? Like one of you noticed, very good, that there in the hadith, there's eight, nine, eight, eight signs. And now there are six. And look, he started what? With the rising of the sun. What is the first sign here? Is the rising of the sun. What was the first signs in the, in the ten ones? The ten signs will not happen unless the following things will happen. Land is sliding in the east, land is sliding in the west, land is sliding of the Arabian Peninsula, the smoke, the Dajjal, the beast, the Gog and Magog, and then the last thing is the rising of the sun. But this is totally in this agreement with what Muhammad is saying that there are six things will happen, starting with the sun. In that hadith, the last thing is the sun appear from uh, the west, supposedly. Here, the first one is the sun. The sun, we will be careful. Yeah, we are not making things up. It's in front of you. If Muhammad is speaking by the guidance of Allah, why he cannot recite the order of the signs correctly? Now, when Muhammad he says that the sign is going to appear from the West, anyone knows why he's saying that? This is additional proof that Muhammad is a false prophet. 
You see, here it says that the sun will appear from the west, but they don't tell you why. Because Muhammad, the false prophet, he believed that the sun goes every day from the east to the west. It will show you the reference. Close some pages because it became too many. Okay. Muhammad he taught his followers about how the sun move, and remember he is a prophet who prophesy. He is prophesying about how the sun movement something nobody knows at that time save the prophet. Look what Muhammad he said. Once I was with the Prophet in the mosque, at the time of the sunset, the Prophet said, O oh Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun set? I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. He said, it goes and prostrate itself and at Allah's throne. And that what's mean that Allah is saying in the Quran, and the sun runs onto a fixed course. The Muslim they made uh, uh, articles of uh, science about this. They claim that the prophet he speak about the galaxies and the orbit, but this is the orbit. The orbit of the sun, the sun goes every day from the east to the west, read it. And not only that, let us see different different reference. <clears throat> Because in different hadith, Muhammad he made it more clear. Uh, <clears throat> Here we go. This is a Sahih hadith. This is Sahih Muslim, and this is the hadith number. All right. Muhammad he claimed that the sun every day. He said, "Do you know where the sun goes?" He replied, Allah and his apostle knows best as usual. He says, verily the sun, uh, you know, uh, go until it reach the resting place under the throne. So Muhammad, he claimed the movement of the sun. This is during the sunset time. That the sun move every day from the east to the west. Then it falls to prostrate and remain there until it's asked to raise up again. So Muhammad here explained to us the movement of the sun. How the sun set, why the sun disappeared, why we don't see it, where the sun is doing, what is the sun is doing during the night? During the night, the sun is sleeping under the throne of Allah. Guys, are you, are you following with me? The sun is under the throne of Allah. And the sun will keep doing this every day. And it goes back and continues emerging out from the rising place of the sun. So this is the normal behavior of the sun. This is alone is enough to prove to us that Muhammad is a big fat liar. Do we have any Muslim here want to say something different? Isn't it this is alone is enough to prove that Muhammad is a false prophet? When Muhammad, he says where the sun goes and the man, he says to him, Allah and his uh, apostle knows best. You see, Muhammad, he don't claim his knowledge from his own. He says, Allah and his apostle knows best. Muhammad, he did not say don't involve Allah here, I'm guessing. No, he accepts what the man says. Allah and his apostle knows best. Muhammad here is a spoke, speaking as the apostle of Allah, not as a Bedouin. He is guessing how the sun set or raise. So Muhammad here claiming that this is how the sun spend her night goes every day sleep under the throne of Allah and then in the morning Allah will wake up the sun and he will send it back where it's risen from and then the story continue so we'll go back it goes back and continues emerging out of it is rising place and the glitz till till it reach the place of the rest under the throne and fail and prostrate and remain this is like a normal behavior for the sun it's that in, in that state it is asked to raise and return up, return to the place where you come. Look here, this is a change. 
the sun the sun at the last day come from where come from the uh, from the west like went from the east come to the west so it appeared to Allah under the throne under the west so Allah this time he will ask the sun to go and appear from the west not from the not from the east and will return and emerge from its rising place this is the normal thing and then enter enter then it would be raised and it rise and up and emerge out from the place where you of your sitting and it will raise from the place of sitting so when Muhammad he claimed that one of the signs of the judgment day the sun will appear from the west proving to us that he is a false prophet because he is claiming that the sun is moving from A to B and the sun sleep every night and at the throne of Allah and the throne the, the sun movement is the sun going from east to the west not the earth is moving around itself do you see it Muslims so if Muhammad is a prophet of Allah how he makes such a such a stupid lie and this is will be added to thousands of his stupid lies Muhammad he already he said any Muslim Do we have any Muslim here when a, either Muhammad is a prophet or he's a liar? Obviously, this is a lie. If Muhammad is a prophet claiming that Allah told him this, this is about Allah, this is not about this is not about science now, this is about religion, supposedly. As you see, the sun goes portrayed under the throne of Allah. He's to, he's saying, Do you know where the sun goes? You see what the question, guys? So the Muslim cannot play games and say, This is not uh, do you know where the sun goes? At the time of the sunset, he said to him, do you know where the sun goes? So this is about where the sun goes. And he explained. So this is a sign of the judgment day and the sun of the judgment day that the sun would appear from the west. Why? Because the sun goes every day from the east to the west and sleep on the throne of Allah. And then one day Allah will not allow the sun to come from the west. He will allow it to come from the, from the, from the, from the, uh, from the east. He will allow it only to come from the west. This is alone proven to us that Muhammad, all his signs of judgment day is a lie. Any Abdul? Any Muhammadan? If there is any Muslim who would like to call me right now, right here, and challenge me, feel free, please. Uh, uh, Proverbs. We, we don't want to change the topic, my friend. And uh, the dough stripe, I don't know what, what, what do you mean. If there is any Muslim would like to call me, hey, this guy, Naku, uh, whatever his name, uh, before he called us, he's a kid, right? Isn't this is the same kid he called us before? Any Muslim? Clear signs that Muhammad is a false prophet. What else? Are we done? No, we are not done. There is endless. What about Muhammad claiming that the sun set in the murky water? And this is in the Quran. And this is confirmed in the Hadith. And this is a Sahih Hadith. I was sitting behind Allah Messenger who was riding a donkey. While the sun was sitting, he asked, Do you know where the sun set? I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. He said, It's set in a, in, a, in a murky water. Is that is this hadith a sahih? Absolutely. This is a sahih book. And this is the reference. So, according to your God, and, and by the way, this is the Quran. The Quran says the same. That uh, Zulqarnain, he found the sun sitting in the murky water. So how you say to me, Muhammad is a prophet? What? What else? Any? Any? Anyone can remind me of some stupid things Muhammad said. Everything stupid. What about how the baby is made? 
The sun sitting, he found the sun sitting in muddy water. And this is exactly what Muhammad said in the hadith. This guy is saying to me, read the full hadith. We did read the full hadith. Are you, are you stupid or what? We did. Guys, uh, Fahim, he's being Fahim now. He's saying to me, read the, the full hadith. We did. <laughs> Didn't we? This is the full hadith. Which hadith you want? Here we go. I was sitting behind Allah Messenger. Is that is that the part you like, Fahim? I, th I think this is the one you like most. You are saying to me, read the hadith. This is the hadith. It's two lines. And we are showing it in the screen. And I think this is what is interesting you. I was sitting behind Allah Messenger. I was sitting behind Allah Messenger who was riding a donkey while the sun was sitting. He asked, do you know where this sit? I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. So Muhammad, he claimed that he is speaking for Allah and he is speaking as apostle of Allah. He said, it said in a spring of murky water. Okay, I did read the hadith. What do you want to say, Fahim? What's your comment? Are you satisfied now? Uh, with the hadith? So how Muhammad is a prophet and he prophesied a sun movement. Forget about this uh, sun stuff. Let us uh, let us see something else from the Quran. Quran, you know, Muhammad is a prophet, right? Okay. Muhammad, the prophet in the Quran, he found where the sun rise. His God, he found where the sun rise. The guy, he changed his direction, Zul Qurnayn, Alexander the Great. And, and then he followed away. The one is talking is who? Allah. Until when he reached the sit, the rising of the sun, not the rising of sun, by the way, the rising place of the sun, change the translator. I mean, Muslims, they love to fabricate translation. Let us see. Till when he reached the rising place of the sun, hey Muslims, where is the place where the sun rise? How does guy he reach the rising place of the sun? Muhammad now is telling us about the past. He is a prophet, a past nobody knows. Correct, guys? Prophecies can go back on time, which are telling about something nobody knows. Usually, prophecy, when we say prophecy, is about future, like telling us what will happen. But now prophecy goes backward. Muhammad is telling us something nobody knows, only him. And what he knew, Allah, Allah is talking now. This is Quran. Allah is the one is talking, not Muhammad. The man, Alexander the Great, he keep walking until he found where the sun sitting place is. Okay, Muslims, where is the sitting place of the sun? Anyone can tell me where is the sitting place of the sun? I thought the sun rise everywhere. I do not know to I do not need to travel anywhere. This guy he have he changed his direction. First, he found the sitting place of the sun. And he found it sitting in a, in a muddy spring of water. Okay, that's a good deal. Now he changed direction. He followed another road. And now he keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. And this, by the way, this is take years. This is about the life of Alexander the Great, who spent years in war. And then he reached the rising place of the sun. So this is not a one in a one day trip, two day. This is years. So now what Muhammad is trying to say. He found the sitting place of the sun, that is the west, the end of the earth. The earth set the sun, he found the sun in the murky water. He changed and now he he, he attacked, he started attacking the west, the, sorry, the east. 
until he reached the rising place of the sun. So Muhammad he claimed that there is a rising place for the sun, a rising place uh, and setting place for the sun. And now he rise, he found the sun rising on people, and there is people next to it. There is people who live there. Is that a prophet of God? Is that will make Muhammad a prophet of God? Actually, um, you know, I, I'm I'm thinking uh, to make a sh small videos better than making this video because those videos are really long, right? So will be maybe hard for you. So I'm thinking to start making a new series of videos. Like each one of them is like maybe five minutes, talking about each one of them alone. I'm I'm post it and you download. It. What do you think, guys? I will, I will say the same thing I said in this video, but I will make it uh, easier for you to download. So later, maybe today, later, I'm going to make uh, like, uh, you can join me if you want, I will go live, but it will be very short. So don't be bored, don't be surprised why it's five minutes, because the purpose is to make it short, so you can download it easy and you can share it easy by email, by Facebook, you know. Like the videos we make usually are very long and it's very hard for people to, uh, to take like a topic at the time so I, I, I will think about it even though it take more time from me because you know go life off life off law so, uh, but we can do that we can do that why lie about the prophecy well Islam Dawa do you like to call me my friend Islam Dawa is saying I'm lying Islam Dawa I have a challenge for you do you dare to call me and to prove me lying about the prophecy what do you think guys do Islam Dawa dare to do so or he is just a mouth behind the text Islam Dawa I have an open challenge for you do you dare to call me life and, sh and show the people that what I am saying is a lie What happened to Islam Dawa? He's he faint. He's not talking no more. What about your Bible prophecy? Why you change the topic now? Here we go. A second ago you said to me, I'm lying. I thought you wanna you wanna get me busted. You see, the second you put them in the corner, challenge him to prove me lying. What about my Bible? My friend, okay, so you admit that your prophet is a liar. So by saying, by changing the topic, saying, what about your Bible? That's mean you admit that your prophet is a liar. So thank you for leaving Islam. Do you like to call me Islam Dawa and say, I am out of Islam, my prophet is a liar? What do you say? Because either you take the challenge you just made that I am lying, and you prove it to everybody and everybody will listen to you i will give you all the time to talk what do you say islam dawa dawa are you there what happened islam mr islam what happened do you want to get me busted you will chat with me in youtube what does that mean? <laughs> okay, as long as you will chat with me in YouTube, can you show me the lie I just said? I'm showing in the screen everything I say. Which one of them is a lie? No answer. He found the rising place of the sun. I want to Islam Dawa and the Muslims who they are in the chat to tell us where is the rising place of the sun. Where we can find that. And look what happened. There he uh, he found <clears throat> The people of Gog and Magog. 
where we can find those people who Allah put them behind the dam <coughs> any Muslim can tell us if Muhammad is a true prophet he prophesied that Alexander the Great long time ago he put a huge nation they are very scary nation war warrior and they have a very funny look to the point they sleep inside their ear the ear of each one of them is in the size of a tent and each one of them he can have six and have one thousand baby so where we can find this nation Gog and Magog Huh? Arabian prophet call ultimate truth uh, this is you ultimate fort ultimate fort is the last person who speak about Islam let me tell you what ultimate fort he said guys is it true that this guy he said he's a kid he said that the Muslim scholars are liars did he say that did he say that so we will debate about with who with somebody he claimed that Muslims are liars not only Muslims the best of the Muslims just because he want to save the ass of Muhammad from being exposed as Muslim scholars are liars so I will debate you about what I will show you a hadith after hadith after hadith and he will say to me they are liars they thank you it's a very clear sign of defeat when you insult the Muslims, call them liars. What I want more. Actually, I am here to prove to you that they are liars. Thank you very much. And as long you are there, ultimate fort, what about your answer? Answer, here we go. Where is the people of Gog and Magog? Where the sun set? Here we go. Who wanna answer where the sun set according to Muhammad? Are you going to say Muhammad is a liar? Yes, he is a liar. Is this hadith is a weak hadith? No. Is it authentic hadith? Yes. So what we will do? I will tell you what you will do. You will say the scholar is liar and the Muslims are liar. I agree. Look, they are liars. There's one of two. Either you Muslims are a bunch of liars or Muhammad is a liar. Choose one. For me, I see that both of you, you lied to cover, the, to cover up for Muhammad. Those hadith was authentic for centuries, for 1400 years. Actually, Al-Bukhari, he came 300 years after Muhammad. So all more than a thousand years, those are authentic today they are liars why because we spank you with it you are talking about making money your god allah make money what's wrong with making money guys you you are liar because you make money let me show you thank you very much what the quran says the quran says follow those who ask you not for money guys do i ask you for to follow me did i ever claim to be a prophet no people here they want to make donations it's up to them to support us but nobody is following me. I'm not a prophet. Let us see what the Quran says. Read carefully and love. The Quran said, follow those who ask no fees. He asked you for no fee. Guys, is my program for free? It's for free. Nobody need to give any donation. The poor, the rich, the Muslims, the Hindu, the Buddhas, all is welcome. We ask for no people, no people for fees. You're a prophet in the Quran speaking about Paul. This is about Paul, by the way. The one here is talking, this is Paul. You Muslims keep attacking Paul day and night. But the one is talking here is Paul and Peter and S Simon Peter and John. According to Muhammad, 
Follow those who ask you for no fees. Okay, did Muhammad ask you for fees? Muhammad not only asked you for fees, he asked you for your women to sleep with him. All cult leaders, they share the same thing. They like to have sex with their followers. To the point Muhammad, he made chapters about Allah giving him a privilege about sex. Privilege about sex? Yes, he's a cult leader. Are we lying? No. We prove it in the front of you. Here we go. And this is your translation. Look at the list. Allah, he allowed the prophet to have sex with them. Look at this. And by the way, here, I find it very funny and very stupid. Oh, Allah, Apostle, we have made lawful for you to have sex with your wives. Thank you, Allah. For the first time ever, we heard a wisdom of God saying, you can have sex with your wives. So the guy, he have sex with them all this time, and now you are saying to him, you can have sex with them? Continue. And anyone who you possess, your sex slaves. Rape all the slaves. And anyone given to you in a slave of war, and the daughter of your uncle, and the daughter of your uncle from your father, and the daughter of your uncle from your mother's side, and the daughter on the all of this, and then he says, and I believe in women if she give herself into the prophet, if he desire to f her, not to marry her. And look, it's a privilege for thee only. A clear sign of a cult leader is sexual privilege. You can go right now and search on Google and you will find all cult leaders. They give themselves a privilege to sleep with the women who follow them. Why Muhammad, who is a prophet of God, he need a privilege about his penis. He have already many wives. Many women. What the point of this privilege? So you, do you see what you did, Islam Dawa? You opened the, 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 the gate of hell on your prophet. You spoke about money. Your prophet not only he asked for money, he asked for vagina. Let us show you more. Are we done? No. You cannot even meet the prophet without paying him in the front. Is that true? If you don't like the translation, I will change the translation for you. Maybe this is not the translation is not fair, not nice for you. I will show you another Abdul. Let us see another Abdul. Oh, who you believe when you consult with the messenger in private, spend something before you cancel. Do you see it? Do you know how many thousand people they talk to me already and I never charge a penny to any one of them? Who of you, in order to speak to, to me, he had to pay me money, guys? If there's any here, if there's any of you, I am a Christian prince, I say to you, I will not talk to you unless you pay me first. What about you pay me after? Never. Not first, not before, not after. You're a prophet, he is no money, no honey. He's like a Pepsi Cola machine. What kind of a prophet this prophet is? And how the Quran says in one verse, follow those who ask you no wages. Do you see it? Actually, I have headache because I keep answering people, emails. I give up Facebook, uh, Facebook and Skype because it's too much. I can't even do work no more. So, follow those who ask you no fees, Muhammad, he asked for women to sleep with him. Ibn al-Arabi, he said, if the Prophet, his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her immediately. So he can have her. 
The Prophet, if you like your wife, you have to divorce her immediately. What does that mean? What happened to the Muslims? They are, look, they, they are not saying anything. They are, they are in the mute. Where is the Muslims when I get us busted? Huh? Keep uh, bargaining and uh, granting you them right all uh, major signs of the end of the time about the truth, fact, 100. Okay, what is the major sign? Look at this Abdul. This Abdul is so upset from me. He always call me names. I mean, look at this Abdul. Okay, li listen, uh, fee or free, we. We, 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 okay, I want you to, ch I want to challenge you. Give me one sign, your prophet, he said it's come to be true. As an example, your prophet spoke about the sun set in the murky water. Did we find the sun setting in murky water? The sun rise in place, the sun set in place. Your prophet spoke about the beast. Your prophet spoke about the Antichrist or the Muslims, they call him at the Jal, the false messiah. Your prophet, he spoke about uh, that uh, uh, the plague will not enter Mecca and Medina, but the plague enter Mecca and Medina. You can go right now to the Saudi Arabia website and they have uh, studies about how many people die in plague. So how Muhammad, he says, plague will never enter Mecca and Medina? Hmm? What do you say? I think the only thing Muhammad he said is truthful is when he said that a Muslim in the heaven like this guy free he is going to give birth to a baby and I would like to see that live on camera a Muslim male he is going to give birth for a baby this must be true the question is the baby will come from where I challenge any Muslim to tell me where you are going to deliver the baby where from you are a man you are a man you are a male your name is Mimi hijab you have a beard you hold a camp and you start camping your beard in the stage because the girls are looking and now you are in the heaven of Allah and now you have your belly getting bigger and bigger and bigger what because you have a baby and then you will deliver the baby in less than an hour and by the way, here the word hour is not accurate. In Arabic, it says hour, but hour in the Arabic in the time of Muhammad is like 15 minutes. This is what I call the, the fast microwave. I challenge you, the Abduls, they are in the chat, to tell me you will deliver the baby from where? I will give you three options. From your nose, from your mouth, or from your... Uh, <clears throat> where? This is a prophecy. This is a prophecy. Are you against this prophecy or you support this prophecy? Look at them. They, they, what happened to them? They are not there. They don't answer. <clears throat> there is no one Allah will admit him to paradise, but Allah will marry him, will if him. To a 72 wives from the Huris, two from the Huris, and 70 from the inheritance of the people of hell. Allah will import a special hookers from hell. That's why they are in hell. They are they are hookers. Who they have a very desirable front passages. Do you see it? The God of Allah promising us that He will import for us hookers 
from strapteze clubs who have very nice front passages and you know what I'm talking about and not only that he promised you that your main member will never go flat this is a prophecy too are you proud Matt Davis he is saying Quran is authentic well the Quran is authentic or not Quran have nothing to do with peace uh, you know a few days ago many countries they were complaining about Saudi Arabia crucifying people but this is in the Quran so how come you allow the Quran to be taught in your country but you are against Saudi Arabia crucifying people they are just doing what Allah said this is in the Quran cutting hands cutting feet crucifixion putting nails in the eyes it's in front of you chapter 5 verse number 33 any Abdul come to Saudi Arabia you will see who said I wasn't in Saudi Arabia Maybe I know Saudi Arabia more than you. And what, what if I came to Saudi Arabia, what you can do? Actually, Saudi Arabia is the most safe place for me because the Saudi, they will never dare to touch me. I'm an American citizen. You will be trembling in your booty when you see me. Do you dare? You will stamp my passport and you will not dare to say you are not welcome. What do you say? I can go right now to Imarat. Arrest me. I challenge you. I can go right now to Qatar, the head of the Islamic Muslim Brotherhood. Do the Prince of Qatar dare to arrest me? I am an American citizen. Cowards. You will not dare. Trump, he will hang uh, the Prince of Qatar from his uh, Jalabiya. Somebody is asking me, Jesus is real. Okay, let me ask you, what is the date today? Maybe you are drunk in order to answer you. Mr. Mom, as long as you are asking me about Jesus is real, what is the date today? Maybe you are drunk. Do you know what the date today? You do not know. You are drunk. Maybe taking hashish. Is is searching Google? What is the date today? You don't know. Two thousand nineteen after Christ. Look how stupid you are. Is Jesus real? All your history, your salary, your computer, your watch, your phone, everything around you, your internet, work by the time of Jesus. And you are asking until now, wondering if Jesus is real? Is how stupid you are. <coughs> Do we have any Abdul? No, we will not stop going live. But I just said, I like this video, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thinking to uh, uh, not to keep it. I will make, after I finish now, right away, I will make small series of small ones. So you guys, you can download it and you can share it easy, like five minutes, maybe 10 minutes each. Like whatever time to, to finish the topic. But it's going to be short, like for sure less than 15 minutes. So you guys, you can download it easy. Why Quran show the truth for you? Because you're an idiot. Where is the truth in the Quran? Show me. Show me where is the, where is the truth in the Quran? Like what? What is the truth? That the baby is coming from a sperm? And the sperm is coming from the backbone? 
Hmm? Is that the truth? Hey, Muhammad is prophesying that there is a baby is made by the sperm which is coming from the ribs of the woman and the backbone of the man. I mean, this is the truth. He showed you the truth. That's it. I mean, that's it. And by the way, my backbone is hurting because I donated a lot of a sperm to the Islamic Bank of Sperm. Any Abdul? Here we go. This is a pro this is a false prophecy. A prophet he claimed that he knew how the baby is created. I mean, everybody in the world knows what is what is called balls for, except Muhammad. Muhammad, he never heard of something called testicles. Muhammad, he thinks that the sperm is coming from the ribs of the women and the backbone of the man. If you don't believe me, I can go and open that the tafsir for you. Let's go to the tafsir. All right? Shall we? Go to the tafsir, brother. Let us show. Let us show you the tafsir. So you don't say we are making things up. You see, I want to finish so I can go and do the small videos, but those guys, they are coming here. Let us see. We go to Ibn Kathir. We go to chapter 86. All right. And then, bingo. Read carefully with me. This is Ibn Kathir. Not my book, not my words. I have nothing to do with it. He is explaining to you the Quran, brother. MashaAllah. Look how the human mean is made. Okay. Proceeding, there's a gushing fluid, gushing forth fluid, sexual fluid, come bursting forth from the men and the women. Okay, from where? At the sea. It comes from both of them. Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs, meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. I'm really convinced Muhammad is a prophet. He showed me the truth. I was blind. Huh? Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs, the backbone of Muhammad, the man, and the ribs of the women. Okay, guys, you know what? I'm going to stop here and I'm go back. Give me just five minutes. Just give me five minutes. I will go live and we will make series of false prophecy prof, prophecy of Prophet Muhammad. And uh, uh, just take a note. Uh, we will not stay long, which means I will hang up after maybe five or ten minutes and might come back again. So join us again. Five, ten minutes and I hang up and come back again, etc. Until I cannot like I get uh, get uh, uh, get tired from this. Shall we do it? Shall we do it? All right. Let us hang up on here. And this video, I'm not going to keep it so because it's so long. And we will repeat the same things. But maybe, no, we, we, need, we do not need to repeat. I mean, he have many lies. Why we need to repeat? But we can just cover some of the lies we already we mentioned. All right. There's no need to repeat. But I can provide you with endless lies of Muhammad. We are just showing like the most, uh, we are just responding to the Muslims. Otherwise, everything this guy, he said is a lie. So give me my maybe five or ten minutes, all right? And I will come back live on air again, and we will do some more videos. All right? Thank you very much.